Okay, we've got two races on ITV4 at Haydock Park. The first of them is the 205, the Betfred Rendlesham Hurdle. And down at Ascot, we've got Bryony Frost with an odds-on favourite on Black Corton. Up at Haydock, we've got Lizzie Kelly in an odd, on an odds-on favourite in Agripart. Just how sure is Agripart now, Tom? Indeed, Agripart is rock solid at four to six. Zarkandar is next in at seven to two. Watt is nine to two. Donna's Diamond is 12s and it's 33 to 1 the outsider. No hassle hop. Graham Rodway, what is the betting strategy here? I don't want to be taken on the favourite. I mean, I think if Agripart comes in and runs the same level that um, he did when he, he beat Holstone at Cheltenham, I think it'd be more than good enough. He, he likes this sort of ground, he, handle, he handles a track uh, and he just looks a rock solid favourite. Do you back him at nine to, uh, four to six though? Is that your game? Not for, not for me. I'd be a watching race. So okay. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be against him. Wouldn't want to be with him at the price. Okay, uh, Tom Nugent, what's your view here? Yeah, just a, a grade two on bag ground is 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 Agra Parts bag. I was hoping Klein might stay in it, but uh, sadly he came out, so I wouldn't really be taking on the favourite with anything else to be honest. Two votes for the jolly. Is it three, DJ? Uh, I want to ask Graham a question first. Uh, why do you think Agra Part handles the track? <laughs> I knew I knew he was going to say that because he's only run there once, and he did he didn't yes. run particularly well. How did well. he do, Graham? How he didn't did he, he didn't run particularly well. What, did he run off at the bends? <laughs> did he get lost? Did he go the wrong way? <laughs> well, what's it got to do with the track? He might just have had a bad run. <laughs> I I, th I think he'll be okay at the track. <laughs> it's just a hunch. Okay. Well, I thought that the one negative for Agra Park was the track because he's only ran there once, and that was in this very race last year where he was. A favourite again after winning the race at Cheltenham. He came here, 11 to 8 favourite. He's really disappointing. Uh, he was beaten four lengths by Zarkander, who obviously re opposes here today. And that's the nagging doubt I have. If you're going to be backing a horse at 8 to 11, you want nearly every box to be ticked. And I just wonder is Agra Park a better horse at Cheltenham than he is at Hayda? Um, he seems to really like the undulations of Cheltenham. And uh, I can't get that performance last season out of my head. Jump early, never really looked happy. And I thought Zarkander beat it fair and square last season. Now, the racing suggests that Zarkander has it all to do to beat Agropark. But Zarkander is one of these horses that just pops up when you least expect it. He's got a tongue strap. He's got blinkers on. He's an enigma at this stage. But at the prices, he's probably worth chancing. You're going to go Zarkander. Good old Zarkander. What career he's had. The 315s are the televised race. It's the Betfred Grand National Trial. They'll be slogging through this mud for three Miles, four and a half furlongs, and the horse that dominates the entry market, Black Line, also dominates this market, Tom Nugent. Black Line is our nine to four favourite at the moment. The Dutchman is next in at nine to two. Wild West Wind is five to one. Three Faces West, 11 to two. Mystery, eight to one, and it's 12 to one bar. Tom, you're going first, but um, I've, I've just got to say this. I think Black Line is a really poor value Grand National favourite. I just think he completely ran out of gas last time. I think he'll give you a great run and he might trade shorter in running, but I just don't know how he's going to find the stamina that, that was missing last year. What's your view, Tom? Yeah, I, I look, he's... he's uh... He obviously stays relatively well, but there are those concerns, as you pointed out. I'm not sure if I'd be getting stuck into him as the market favourite at the moment. They're surely value at this point out the field. Uh, in terms of the race on Saturday, uh, what do I fancy? I, I, I'd take a chance on three faces west. Obviously, coming to, coming into this on the back of a fall in Haydock, the last day isn't ideal, but he's back down to 144, and I think he can be, can be uh, very competitive. He's competitive off a of 147. Uh, he won off 147, rather, in Newbury uh, in December 2016, was off for a long time, and uh, I, th I think he has a good chance here, Wild West to win, or three faces west for me, sorry. Three faces west, yeah, watch your bets, because we've got Wild West wind as well. Okay, DJ, what's your view of the winner here? Yeah, I, I just first of all, on Black Line, I completely agree with you. Uh, Black Line reminds me of a horse that I kept back in the Grand National, because he always travelled well, but never won, and it was big fella tank. Um, I think Black Line is similar. I just don't think he's going to stay the Grand National trip. And I think you're always going to look like a winner until the second last. And it's just going to be utterly frustrating, I think. And uh, it was the same with that Paul Nichols horse. What do you call the Paul Nichols horse that ran in the Grand National the last couple of years? Always travelled really well. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. It'll come back to me. Anyway, but I think on the Grand National front, I think that's the case with Black Line. And this race... I like, can't tell, I'm going to DJ, I can't tell whether Graham Rodway's trying to think of that yeah, horse, whether he's completely road zoned out. <laughs> no, right? I'm trying to think of it, yeah. You're in a zen-like yeah. state. Okay, come on, DJ, who wins this? The 315 at Haydock? 
Yeah, I would have been fancying uh, three faces west like Tom because I think he's down to an attractive mark at 144. But my worry is still the Philip Hobbs stable. Like, he's had no winner in the last fortnight. He's had 15 runners. And uh, plenty of them have been fancied. Like, he's had three of them were favourites. A couple of them were 5-2, to 3-1, to 4-1. to one. And his horses are just not backfiring. Uh, I think three faces west is the most likely winner. Uh, that worries me. And the fact that there's so many front runners worries me as well. I think this is a watching race, Bruce. Graham Rodway, who's going to win? Yeah, three faces west, a long-term track horse, but like DJ, I was going to make exactly the same point. Philip Hobbs has been really struggling for form, so that put me off him a little bit, and I'm going to back the Dutchman instead for a stable that is definitely not struggling for form. Uh, Colin Tizard's really come back uh, in red-hot nick in the last uh, week or two. I mean, his stable is absolutely flying, and the Dutchman managed to win when they weren't going that well uh, over the course last time, and he absolutely fresh capped in Redbeard, who is quite a taller around uh, Haydock uh, and he had Yala Anki who went off favourite well behind uh, I actually thought Yala Anki was the main danger but uh, the Dutchman looks to, to me to be improving and we know he loves heavy ground at Haydock and we know what a big advantage that can be. Okay while we're on the subject of the Grand National I want the Grand National winner from each of you I don't want any reasoning just the name of a horse Graham Rodway. The Last Samurai. David Jennings. Oh probably Total Recall. And Tom Nugent. Tiger roll. Excellent. Thank you very much, chaps. Right, let's move on to Wing Canton, the 245. It's the Betway Kingwell hurdle uh, over the two mile trip. What's the latest betting, Tom Nugent? Uh, sadly, our Kingwell hurdle market has just come down, but off the top of my head, Call Me Lord and Chilvella were uh, toughing it out at the top of the market. I think they were six to four each of two, and Elgin was four to one, uh, maybe around uh, nine or ten to one bar. Righty ho, uh, Graham Rodway, who's going to win the race? Fascinating little race because Call Me Lord, the improver against really the proven uh, type in Chitabello, and I thought Chitabello was by far the the more likely winner of the two. There's, there's always been this myth about Chitabello that he doesn't really like testing ground. I think because Dan Skelton early in his career said he wants it quick, but most of his best form recently has come with plenty of cut in the ground. And I think Call Me Lord's going to have to improve an awful lot to, to get anywhere near him. The interesting runner is Cliffs of Dover for, for Paul Nichols, who was a massive uh, improver as a juvenile, just kept rattling up a sequence and I, I always get the feeling with these Paul Nichols runners especially at Wincanton he's got a fantastic record round there uh, that that could be the biggest danger that might come back to form but Chitabello for me who for you DJ uh, Rocky Creek is the name of that horse by the way oh yeah um, okay yes. yeah <laughs> Um, I I think I, I'm going the opposite way of Graham, which we usually do. If there's two to choose from in a race, Graham will go for one, I'll go for the other, and usually he's right. But uh, call me Lord, like he's rated 152, so he's got four pounds of fine with Chitabello, but he is improving rapidly. And that performance last time at Sandown, like it was really impressive. You know, he carried 11, 12 in really heavy ground, and he just seemed to absolutely adore the conditions. Um, that was the second time he ran on heavy ground, and he was equally impressive when he ran on his final start in France in Compiègne. Uh, I think he's the potential to be potentially a 160-rated horse, and that puts him ahead of Chittabello. So, yeah, call me Lord. Tom Nugent? Uh, Chittabello, to me, for me, uh, I think the worry about the ground for him is a, is a myth. Um, I've a, I've a mare in fold to Sageburg, his sire, and Sageburg's three-year-old hurdle sets in France. Uh, on ground would suggest that all his stock don't mind bad ground at all. Uh, he's £10 well in technically with Elgin and I think he's just better than Call Me Lord. I love the way Tom Nugent just drops in that he's got a mare in foal to so and so because he's one of, the, <laughs> one of the leading uh, owner breeders in Ireland this year. Did you know that? I had no idea. Who, who's right. that bumper horse, Tom, you've got this different class? Uh, myself and my stepfather bred a horse called Black Bull yes. who is now fa joint favourite for the uh, champion bumper. How exciting. Should we be lumping on, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I'd be. I'm a nervous wreck already, so I can't. Uh, I don't. It doesn't bear thinking about what I'd be like on the day. How exciting! Well, good luck with that one. Uh, it looks a really exciting prospect.